Hello guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Model Bench. Welcome back to the channel. Um, part 10 now of the build of this AH64 Apache Guardian from Tacom. So, um, where are we? I'll show you what's left in the box. We've obviously got some decals. We've got a little sheet of PE. We've got four rotor blades. And we've got the rotor folding holder sprue there. So basically, we are done. I've got a box here of bits and pieces. We've got the gun. We've got our clear lenses for our missiles. We've got the tail rotor. If you remember, I said I had this plastic. Where's my tweezers? I have no nails. I can't pick things up. My nails are disgusting, I know. I have that plastic um, antenna that goes on the back. I've remade that with some brass tube. So now we can knock it and have it bent and everything and not worry about it snapping off. It's far nicer than... Um, than having plastic and we've also got this other piece in here which are going to be our static dischargers to go on the stabilator. We have our windscreen wipers here which will have to be painted after they're we'll have to clean them up first and then paint them. We've got our brakes here I haven't fitted those yet because they go on the ends of the um, ends of the axles and they'll be sticking down and they'll just get snapped off so we fit them at the same time as the wheels and then here we've got the covers for our rocket launchers there and then this here is a little cap just a little cap piece that goes on the top of the the main rotor hub but I'm not sure if you if you decide to use the um, when you look at the folding rotor bit um, as part of the kit they give you this this arm here these instructions are terrible I've been trying to work out what these what these are showing you when we get to it I'll show you this arm here goes on the centre. I'm not sure if it will fit over that piece, so I haven't fitted that on yet. But uh, and I'm not even sure if I'm going to use that. Basically, this arm, they put this, they mount this onto the centre of the uh, rotor head, and then they put these these claws around the rotor. And then when they unbolt the the pivots, it allows them to swing it round without the rotor sort of twisting and snapping itself off. Because you can see here where is it where we build the rotors up um, as the folding rotors you can see here how they go they sort of hang out you've got one one bolt in that piece and then one bolt it's, it's all sort of hanging right out and it would just twist and snap off so they have that frame there to support them so I'm not sure if that's going to be going on or not or whatever I don't know yet but um, basically as you can see we are pretty well finished Here's my stand of painted parts. We've got all the missiles there all painted. I've made some masks up masked wheels so they're ready for having their tire black put on them. We can get them on. Um, we've got our rocket launchers there with a little bit of fading on them, as you can see there. Uh, or pre-shading, should I say. We've got our uh, rails there for our missiles. They're all painted up in black. We've got the Stabilator, tail plane, whatever you want to call it, that's there. Look at the images, I've got a feeling these panels here are going to be matte black, but we'll do them afterwards. But I've done the pre-shading on there, so you can see that when we do the painting, this isn't, um, some people call this black basing, um, it's not really black basing. Black basing is when you come in a lot tighter and put in little squiggles. This is almost like um, when you do pre-shading with your black lines over a grey primer. I've just done the opposite and I've done a light grey in between and I've got it all blotchy, which is how I want it. I want it to look blotchy and uneven and everything and bleached by the sun and dirty handprints and all sorts. So here's the actual helicopter itself now. So there it is. And you can see it's all completely blotched and absolutely looking like a mess. So that's exactly how we want it. And also you can see that it's be becoming very, very difficult to pick up because of all these little tiny bits and pieces, reeblies that are all over it. But you can see now, now we're starting to get some colour onto it. You can see how it's all starting to really, really come to life. We also have after this to do this massive decal sheet, um, which is not that big. But when you look at the quantity of decals, it's quite daunting. And something else I've noticed, which is going to be a proper problem, I think, is when you look at some of these decals like this one here, if I can catch it in the light, you can see the amount of carrier film on there. It's just unbelievable. So that might be a bit difficult to get down. So we'll make sure we give this a good gloss coat before we start. Because after all this work of building this model, it hasn't been easy at all. 
um, after all this work it's not going to be uh, nice to see silvering left behind so we will have to make sure we work carefully with those decals and make sure they go down nicely. Um, so there we are, so what I've got to do now is get some green paint on here and then we can leave it to dry for a couple of days and then get some clear on it and start to do some decals. So this is going to be one of those videos that's going to be, I don't know, maybe an hour long, but it's probably going to be over a week in the making. So uh, let me get some painting done and then I'll come back and um, show you what it looks like. There we go, guys. All painted up in my mix of Helo Drab. And as you can see there, we've got the, the light grey blotchiness showing through. As I've always said, the camera makes it a lot more pronounced than it really is. So you're seeing a lot more of the grey than I can see. But, uh, it just breaks it up, as you can see, it breaks up the surface and just instead of it just being one dark green colour, it's, it breaks it up. You can see it on the table plane as well. Again, as I say, the camera's making it look a lot more than it really is. But, uh, it's, um, it's a start. So now what we can do is let all that dry for a good 24 hours and then I'm going to give it a nice clear coat. I'll use aqua gloss, I think. And I'll give it a nice clear coat um, for those decals to go down because I'm not sure what Tacom decals are like. Um, I guess I could try one that I know I'm not going to use. I know I'm not going to use these shields. I'm going to have the shark's teeth on there, I think. So obviously we won't be using one of these numbers either. So we'll um, perhaps give it a go with them. I'm not quite sure why we've got a separate sheet. I'm guessing this is generic for the all for all of them, and this is for the E. So uh, that's probably why. Yeah, that's two six zero one, and I think this kit is two six zero two, isn't it? Yes. So this is a generic sheet for all of them, and this is the specific sheet for this kit. So there we go. So um, as I say, give that twenty four hours to dry. We'll give it a clear coat, and then we'll be away. And now with our decals. And there we go. We have a shiny Apache. Shiny, as Oasis would say. But, uh, yeah, so a lot of people would say this is not necessary. Um, you can put decals down on a flat surface. I've done it. I've been successful and I've been unsuccessful. But with a gloss surface you're pretty much guaranteed you're not going to get any silver in. Where you have got to be careful is areas like this on top of these, um, let me just grab this, on top of these engine covers here, you can see it's not that glossy, it's a bit sort of, it's a bit rough. So areas like that you need to be a little bit careful. Um, I've also noticed there's a few areas where there's a little bit of fluff, a bit of dust, whatever. We'll go in and sand that out before we put the decals down you can see on the on this area here on these engine covers or well, the, the, the the spine covers if you like you can see there where I scribed that line where the seam line was <coughs> excuse me bloody cough um we've got some dust in there under the paint or the clear coat we'll sand that out we can always weather it or whatever so we get we'll get rid of that but we'll do that after the decals have been put down and yes you can sand your decals and wear them out and look and make them look real grubby and stuff but we got pretty much the whole thing looking nice and shiny i wasn't too fussed about the underside there's not that many decals to go on the underside um there's a couple to go on here this area here so I've obviously made sure that's pretty glossy and there's a couple going along down here but uh, we don't need to fuss about it too much. There's, we've got some going on the outside of there and the outside of there. I've also, as you can see here, I've, I've, I've gloss coated the, <coughs> excuse me, the stabilator and I've done some sanding there. There's a big chunk of dust under there so I've sanded that out. Um, nothing underneath because there's no decals underneath. We've got all the pylons done. We've got the this fleur thing on the front is done because that's got some decals going on it. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry guys. And these rocket launchers, they've got lots of decals to go on, so I've made sure they're nice and gloss coated and looking all shiny. So um oh blimey, I've got a hard time here, guys. So yeah, basically got them gloss coated for the lots of decals. If there's no decals going on, 
coating on. There's no point in gloss coating because basically it's just, you know, the more layers of paint you, you put on, the more you're softening the detail. So where you've got all these raised rivets and recessed panel lines and everything, the more and more you coat it up, up with, um, with like clear coats and stuff, the more you're losing detail. But uh, I've used aqua gloss on here. It's, it, the aqua gloss pulls down beautifully. So you can see we haven't lost any of the, the rivet detail there. It's obviously going to be softened a touch, but <coughs> it's obviously going to be softened a touch. But we're talking microscopic amounts. So uh, there we go. So now we're on to decaline. I don't think I'm going to do any decals on film because they are tiny. I've, I've cut the sheet into basically into strips of different bits and pieces. But anyway, yeah. So right here, right now, it's Monday the 29th of May 2023. And uh, we're starting to see the doors close on this. I've thrown away the box, I've put it in the recycling, and I've just got this sprue here left of the R parts for the, um, for the folded rotors and the rotor blades themselves. So we are nearly there. So really looking forward to seeing the end of this because it's not been an easy build. It's been quite frustrating in times. But um, I've got other stuff coming which I want to get on with. So um, let's get some decals down and I'll see you when I've done that. Okay, so I've done some of these decals and it's a little bit concerning. I've got the gloss coat down, as you know, on these rocket pods. And I thought I'd do these first. Let's get that out of the way so the camera doesn't white out. But basically you can see I've got the decals on there and they are very, very nice indeed. They're very sharply printed. They're very, very beautiful. But you can probably see we can, the carrier film is very, very obvious. So you can see on there the carrier film around here, around here, is like this big, flat square or rectangle should I say so I'm going to let these go off it's um as I say it's uh it's Sunday evening sorry it's Monday evening at the moment um I'm going to let these go off and then tomorrow I'm going to give them a clear coat and see if that carrier film disappears because if it doesn't um there's no way I'm putting these decals on this helicopter because as we know like with these here you can see this one here with the ring, it's got this huge square of carrier film. This one here, those there, there's there's huge squares of carrier film everywhere. Um, I, I'm sure it is going to disappear because it's just, it's carrier film and it's matte. There's no silver in there. But um, I'm just hoping and praying that the carrier film would disappear under a coat of clear. So I'll give it a clear gloss to seal them in. Then I'll give them a clear matte. To give us a matte coat and then we can start doing our weathering and stuff but um as you can see they're done but the the carrier film is very very obvious right so we can see here i've given these a clear coat and as you can see they've kind of disappeared but they are quite thick you can see the the edge here you can see when i catch it in the light you can see that square decal underneath which is not going to look too bad under a flat coat, but we can see it under a gloss coat. But they are, they are quite thick. So I've carried on and I've started putting the decals on the rest of the airframe. And they're horrible. Um, they won't go down over any detail. You can see, I mean, I'm having real trouble to get them to go down over these rivets here. You know, I've gone in with the set and sole and everything and, and I don't want to use the Tamiya one because I know it will dissolve the paint. Um, so yeah, it's becoming very, very difficult. They are very thick. I'm very tempted to leave it because somebody's bound to come up with an aftermarket set. Reason being, I started going through here and I'm trying to do it in numerical order. So we've got one, right, which is the, the ejection things, whatever they are. And then number two, so we're like into the second part of Declan, and we've got two with number twos. We've got one there, one there, okay? And then we've got one there, one there, but there's only two, two twos on the decal sheet. So you can't do that. So you come along to number three. Um, number three is here and here. 
and here, and here. But there's only two in the deco sheet. Yeah, you want to unpack them? Then we come along to number four, uh, which is here. That's fine. Five is non-existent. Six is here. Okay, that's great. Brilliant. There's two of those. Seven, I think, is non-existent. Uh, seven, oh, seven is here, sir. There's one each side, so we get two of them. And then we come along to number eight, which is here. And on the other side, it's telling us to put 109, which is an APU exhaust. So that's not correct. Then we come to 10, which I think is non-existent. 11. Um, 11 is telling you here to go in there. That one there. But it's not because number 11 is nothing like that. So that's not number 11. Um, that is actually, I'll find it on the sheet. I've got a magnifier, I can look at it and I can see what it says because the, the instructions are that good, you can read it. It's basically engine oil level sight gauge. There we go. So 11 is there, look. So they're telling you to put 11 here and then they're telling you to put 11 there. Well, you're not going to have an engine oil level sight gauge on, on the side of the gearbox, are you? So that's going to be something else. It's not 11. And we've got 11 there and 11 there. Okay, so that's those two taken care of. 12. Okay, it's telling you 12 here, but you've also got 12 here. So 12 is like a little towing one. And then you've got 12 here, which is telling you about danger of antenna. Well, it's 13. Okay, it's not 12, it's 13. That's the ones I just showed you, these two here. One there, one there. It's just a complete and utter disaster. These instructions are a complete and utter joke. Um, they really are taking away the pleasure of this build, I must be honest. I... I I must be honest, I don't think I, I don't think I've enjoyed this build at all. And doing the decals is the worst part of all because after doing those airfix Spitfire decals and dealing with this crap, it's um really, really difficult. So I have a feeling I'm just gonna stop, remove all these decals and wait for somebody to come out with a well not move remove them, I'm just gonna stop and wait for somebody to come out with something better because these things are awful. Um, you know, when it comes to doing this big one here with all that carrier film on it. It's going to be an absolute nightmare. It's going to look a mess. So I'm going to pause this build and come back to it when somebody comes out with an aftermarket set of decals. Because I hope I hope they will. Uh, somebody will come out with a stencil set for it, I hope. Because, you know, these are all just... They're horrible. They're just horrible. Horrible. They're, they're very much... You know that sellotape you can get? I don't think I've got any here. You can get that sellotape that, that sort of has a matte finish to it. That's what they're like. They're very thick. You know, you can even pick them up when they've been on the sheet. You can even pick them up with tweezers. They don't fold under. They just stay there rigid. They're, um, they're horrible, 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 horrible things. And they will not go down. Um, I can even try my rubber squeegee thing. It's a great little tool, this, but it's a bit aggressive for round surfaces. But um, how can I hold this bloody thing? the other problem I can't hold it but I can't get that to go down in there at all it will not go down I've got the same problem up here on this one that one won't go down um, but I'm tempted to stop wait and see if somebody comes out with an aftermarket set use them I can remove those with a bit of sellotape and then uh, go from there I'm also wondering if I've got it a bit too dark. I know the clear coat darkens it up a bit. I've also got a couple of little runs in the clear coat. You can see. Do you see it there? There you are. You see it. Little runs. Whoops. They'll um, they'll be hidden by by a flat coat, but uh, a bit bad having them there, isn't it? So um, I'm going to pause this build and come back to it at a later date. So I hope you've enjoyed the build so far. Um, maybe I'll do the folded rotors now, but I'd rather get all the deckling done before all that's done. So, um, as I said, I'm going to pause this for now, stick it on the shelf of Doom, and then come back to it, because it is a beautiful model. I mean, it hasn't been a fun build, but as a model, it's gorgeous. The detail's lovely. Everything's there. It's really, really nice. But it would be a shame to ruin it with these bloody... They're like stickers, not decals. They're like stickers. They're horrible, horrible things. So, um, yeah. We'll see how somebody else does with theirs. Maybe, maybe Luke will have a go with his. But, uh, ugh. They're awful. I certainly wouldn't try putting them down on that paint. No way. So, thanks for watching, guys. 
and I'll see you all soon back with this one as soon as somebody comes out with an aftermarket set or I'll just leave them all off just you know because you, you can hardly see them anyway they're black on an almost black paint job so but you can see there they're horrid horrible 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 things I mean look at it on the side of there it's like a slab <laughs> they're horrible <laughs> so yeah the instructions continue to be a complete and utter mess even when it comes to decals so great well done Tackham see you all soon guys see you soon for a part what is it part 11 it will be next but it might be six months time Bye for now.